Unlike R.E.M., who may have lost their religion in the corner, the Bearcats can lose production at corner back in 2022. I explain why that's so important this upcoming season on today's episode of Locked On Bearcats. Our Locked On Bearcats, your daily podcast on the Cincinnati Bearcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you so much for making Locked On Bearcats your first listen every day, free and available everywhere you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Subscribe to the Locked On Bearcats YouTube channel up to 217 and counting. Follow us to get an alert every time we drop a new episode. My name is Alex Frank, your host each and every day, former sports director of Bearcast Media, the student-run media organization at the University of Cincinnati, bringing all of my play-by-play experiences from football, men's basketball, and sports talk show Hosting experiences in the Bearcats Media Radio Studio here to the Locked On Bearcats podcast. So the cornerback position, it is the position that is losing, I believe, the most talent. You're losing two All-Americans. You're losing a first-round draft pick. It's still got to be a strength of this team, not only to show that there is not a steep drop-off in terms of production and talent, but also because you've got tremendous momentum with the cornerbacks who you have committed for the class of 2023. And of all the positions, you know, I think a theme overall for the team next season, this upcoming season, 2022, is to prove that last year was not a fluke. You know, you're a group of five team who made the college football playoff. You're instantly going to have doubters. Or people are just going to not care about you, period. They're going to write you off, and you're not even going to be relevant to them because of all the talent you lost. But you can't fall into those traps. I don't think this team will, but it's still worth pointing out that that is just the way it goes. I mean, you look at all the mid-major programs in college football and basketball who either go to a BCS bowl game, New Year's Six Bowl, college football playoff, or the Final Four, and then the next season, yeah, you know who they are, but you don't have high expectations for them. Well, what I want the Bearcats to be is a lot like the 2010-11 Butler Bulldogs men's basketball team who, the year after they went to the national championship, Cinderella run went back again and validated their run the year before. If the Bearcats can do that this year, they'll instantly prove that last year was not a fluke. But one key position that has to be productive once again is cornerback. You are losing hallmarks of your program. You are raising two players who have raised the standard, not only for the position, but for the program. When we talk about Sauce Gardner's legacy, I think the first thing that has to be mentioned is he raised the standard for greatness. He raised the standard of you can come here and you can develop into the fourth overall pick in the NFL draft. Five years ago, you couldn't come here and go to the NFL sometimes. It'd be, I mean, it'd be like, Oh, hey, a player from the University of Cincinnati got drafted. Now it's like, hey, we got a first-round draft pick. Now we can brag about that. That's what Sauce Gardner and Kobe Bryant did. But for the players stepping in and replacing them, Justin Harris, Taj Ward, Sammy Bumpus, whomever it's going to be, they can't just go in there and, you know, lackadaisically, you know, play the position and go through the motions first season of starters. No, that's not how it works. That can't be what happens. If that is what happens, then... All the momentum you gained from last year's run, all the momentum you have in recruiting, it doesn't really look that great. I mean, you cannot go from a first-round draft pick and two All-Americans to a position that becomes a weakness on the roster. Because let's face it, you're going to face some teams who are going to want to throw the ball on you. You're going to face SMU and UCF. You're going to face Houston potentially in the championship game. Those teams are going to target Cincinnati's corners. Why? Because they know they can't. Their offensive staffs have to be thinking, hmm, Sauce and Kobe aren't here anymore. We can go right after these guys. But that's where you have to step up if you are Justin Harris, if you are Taj Ward, if you are whomever starts a corner this season for the Cincinnati Bearcats. You cannot just be stark contrast to Sauce Gardner and Kobe Bryant. There's a standard that they now have to live up to, and that goes for cornerbacks this year, it goes for the cornerbacks led by Diane McCullough, who's leading the 2023 class. You now know the standard. But if you're 
whomever starts this year, you don't want those commits coming in in 2023 to be like, oh, I can do way better than they than they can than they did last year. Think about how bad that would look. That's why there can't be a stark contrast in terms of production and talent at the cornerback position. It is going to look different. It is going to look very different. Would it shock me if they, if whoever starts a corner didn't play well against Arkansas? Yeah. No, it wouldn't shock me, rather. But it is going to be different when you don't see number one and number seven out there. It's going to look very different. But it can't look glaringly different. You know, you'll only know if it's, if it's glaringly different if they aren't very good. Remember that analogy I used for offensive line? You don't notice them really until they're not until they're not good, like a toilet. You only notice it if it doesn't work, right? Well, that 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 is true at corner. Because let's face it, are Justin Harris and Taj Ward and whomever starts a corner are they going to be first round draft picks? Realistically, not. Now, then again, we didn't think Sauce Gardner was going to be when he came in, and look what he became. But realistically, okay, probably not. But that doesn't mean that they can just go out there and we know who they are because they're not very good. You don't want that. You just want them out there doing their job. Not letting receivers beat them deep. Not letting opposing offenses light them up for 400 yards and five touchdowns a game. If they hold them to somewhere near where the Bearcats passing defense stats were last year, this team is going to be very good once again. Up next, why the Cincinnati Bearcats are on more than solid footing heading into the Big 12. I'll explain after a word from Built Bar. You know, our friends at Built are always coming out with these new amazing flavors. Well, this time they've truly outdone themselves with their new mud pie flavor. Mmm, sounds like some Mississippi mud pie. And for the first time ever, Built is introducing the new mud pie flavor in both the bar and the puff. Mm. You're not sure what mud pie tastes like. Well, if you're a chocolate fan, you better sit down for this because this new mud pie bar's rich whipped cream and chocolate mousse smothered in 100% real chocolate. And as if that isn't enough, we topped it off with cookies and cream crumble. Oh my gosh. You've got to try mud pie as soon as possible. I did just lift so I could reward myself with it, couldn't I? And you need to hurry because the Mud Pie Bar and Mud Pie Puff are only available for a limited time. So visit Built.com to taste the deliciousness for yourself. And if you're still not convinced, which I really don't know why you wouldn't be, we've saved the best for last. It's actually good for you. Oh, even better. I can eat it before or after lifting. Man, I'm in great hands. No, really, it's true. All Built products are low in calories, high protein, and low sugar. 16 grams of protein. Only 150 calories and only 8 grams of sugar. It's like your mom baked the most deliciously creamy chocolate mud pie and wrapped it up just for you. Mud pie bars and puffs are available right now at Built.com, but they're going fast because they are delicious. You are going to love the new mud pie built bar and built puff. Whether you need a snack for your workout, a late night treat, or just need to grab a quick bite. That could have been me last night. But uh, I'm excuse me. Built is the perfect protein bar, and they taste better than a candy bar. Chocolate mousse, whipped cream, cookies, and crumble. Stop drooling. Get to Built.com to order your box of mud pie bars and puffs right now. You won't regret it. Use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. One live NBA draft show is not enough for Locked On. So the entire NBA channel is going live on NBA draft night tomorrow night. So if you have a favorite NBA team, make sure you subscribe now to their Locked On YouTube channel so you get notified when they go live on NBA draft night. Alex Frank here with you, your host each and every day here on Locked On Bearcats. So the Cincinnati Bearcats, and I had this conversation with Josh Neighbors yesterday. If you listened to yesterday's show, Locked On Big 12 host Josh Neighbors. The Cincinnati Bearcats are really, in the next two segments, are going to cover topics from that conversation yesterday more in depth. The Cincinnati Bearcats are really on more than solid footing heading into the, the Big 12. I mean, you think about what they have going for them right now, that some programs who are joining Power 5 schools don't. I mean, really, in history, Houston and UCF, I don't think BYU can say these things. Head coach committed for the long term. 
That's who Cincinnati has in Luke Fickle. Tremendous momentum in recruiting. They can win games against Power 5 teams and name brand programs like Notre Dame. Imagine being a team like Houston and UCF joining a Power 5 conference. And yes, it's great. I'm happy for them. UCF should be in a Power 5 conference. Houston should be in a Power 5 conference. BYU, I'm excited that they are going to be on the Power 5 table. It at The BYU at going to a Power 5 conference adds, I believe, a name brand school. Regardless of how successful they are. So we have those things at Cincinnati. Luke Fickle is committed long term. Just signed a, a contract extension this offseason. You've got tremendous momentum, momentum in recruiting. You're in the top five in 24-7's composite rankings for the 2023 recruiting class. You can win games against Power 5 opponents. In the last four years, the Bearcats have won games against UCLA twice. They've won games against Virginia Tech, Boston College. Uh, they beat Army, which is not a Power 5 program, but still I'll throw that in there. They went toe-to-toe with Georgia. And then, oh, by the way, as if that wasn't enough, they beat Indiana and Notre Dame. S- five Power 5 wins in the last four years for the Cincinnati Bearcats. That has to mean something to you. And it means something to me. I've seen this program from the time I started covering them, both for the news record, the UC student newspaper in 2017, and that was in the infancy of Luke Fickle's era, Then, when I became sports director of Bearcast Media in 2018, I saw the program evolve firsthand. I saw in 2018, you know, oh, Cinderella season. We'll see if if they can back that up next year. They did, and it only got better and better and better. I mean, it's been a long process, but it has gotten them here. And a lot of that, they've won some big-time games. From a program who could not compete with Michigan and Ohio State, They beat Indiana and Notre Dame and went toe-to-toe with Georgia and Alabama, and those are their only two losses in the last two seasons. Imagine being Houston and UCF. They've had some success the last five years. UCF has won two conference championships. They've been to two New Year's Six Bowl games. They went undefeated in 2017. If UCF wants to hold anything over Cincinnati's heads, they can hold that. They actually did finish an undefeated season. So they have momentum going into the Big 12, but they don't have nearly as much as Cincinnati. Now, UCF does have a rabid fan base. Their stadium is an incredible atmosphere for a college football game. Cincinnati, we know they have an incredible atmosphere. Nipper Stadium, the ruckus, you name it. But you go into something and you're not bringing any momentum. It's not a good thing. So it's a great thing that Cincinnati is going in. It's not like, oh, yeah, they're finally going to the Big 12. Yep, this is where they deserve. But, yes, that's great. It would have been something last year. I remember Cincinnati got admitted or got extended an invite to the Big 12 on the Friday. Um, the Friday, uh, I'm losing my train of thought here, excuse me, of week two of the college football season. So they had just crushed Miami, not shocked. And they get admitted to the Big 12. They have Murray State on Saturday. You're thinking, oh, they're going to beat him 49 7. And then, well, they're down 7 0 in the second quarter. But, it, okay, forget that. What did they do after they got extended that invite? They went into Indiana and down 14, no flinch. Came back, won the game by 14. Went to Notre Dame as a favorite and beat them by 11. Ran the table in the AAC, won the conference championship, went to the college football playoff. Backed up the invite. Validated why they were invited in the first place. That's huge. That is momentum changing. The Cincinnati Bearcats, it's not like they just got the invite. They did something with it. They made the Big 12 look good for extending them that invite. Houston, the same thing. UCF struggled last year, but then again, first-year head coach getting used to his system. BYU, you know, they've had success in recent years. Name brand program, a lot of history. But in specifically Cincinnati, they have so much going for them right now. Once that snowball starts starts to get going, very, very difficult to stop. And you've got to have a good feeling about this. If you're a Cincinnati recruit, commit, player, coach, fan, student, alum, donor, member of the athletic department, you name it. The time, the historic time that we are living in at the University of Cincinnati, in the grand scheme of things, not just what's happening strictly football related, 
with recruiting and on-the-field play. But overall, what's happening right now around this university is truly remarkable. I mean, it truly is unbelievable. The momentum that this university and athletic program have going into the Big 12, knowing their head coach is locked up for the next six years, you hope, I think he is, knowing the tremendous momentum you've built with what you've done on the field, with the players you just sent to the NFL, who are iconic program or program icons and are someday going to be on the Nippert Stadium Ring of Honor, and you've got this momentum in recruiting showing the rest of the AAC now, the Big 12, and college football, that you're not slowing down anytime soon and you're just coming off a Cinderella run of the college football playoff. There is a lot going for this program right now. They are going to be in the Power 5 spotlight. And they're already doing, accomplishing things at a Power 5 level. That is incredible to think about. And they're carrying all of that into the Big 12. And speaking of Luke Fickle, is he the best head coach once the Bearcats join the Big 12 in the conference? That question examined next after a word from two of our sponsors. When the Cincinnati Bearcats join the Big 12, it is very likely, and I believe this, that Luke Fickle will not only be the best head coach in the conference, but perhaps the most accomplished. Because Luke Fickle has something that no other coach has done something that no other coach in the Big 12 can say they've done with their team. Take them to the college football playoff. That has to mean something, especially in a conference like the Big 12 that has only sent one program in the history of the playoff to it, Oklahoma. And by the way, their head coach who took them to the play, who took them to those playoffs, no longer there. Both coaches, actually. Bob Stoops and Lincoln Riley. Now, Brent Venables has been in the college football playoff, not as a head coach, as a defensive coordinator. You could say Brent Venables is the most accomplished head coach because of his assistant coaching experience. But if we're talking what you've done strictly as a head coach, and I understand Josh Neighbors said this on my on this show yesterday, Locked on Big 12. He said that Mike Gundy is probably the most accomplished head coach. Mike Gundy has only won one Big 12 championship, and that was in 2011. That was when the Big 12 did not have a championship game. So... Luke Fickles won two conference championship games. One in a pandemic year, hard to do. The other, in a year where every single game, there was a gigantic bullseye on the backs of the Cincinnati Bearcats. And yet they went out there and took care of business against a really good Houston Cougars team. Like, all that has to mean something in terms of accomplishments. Brent Venables, Gus Malzahn, and Mike Gundy cannot say that they've taken their teams to the college football playoff. Since the Big 12 instituted the championship game in 2017, Mike Gundy has not won it one time. Now, when Oklahoma leaves, would it shock anyone if Cincinnati, Oklahoma State was a conference championship matchup perennially? I think that could be an interesting rivalry. Because everybody knows Mike Gundy outside of Stillwater, Oklahoma. Perhaps you know why you know him. Because he once said he was a, he's a man and he's 40. Now now he's approaching 60. To think he's still at Oklahoma State. And to think about all that he's done there. Winning 8, 9, 10 games a year. And last year, Oklahoma State had a really good team, man. I mean, they, went, they were a yard away from potentially knocking Cincinnati out of the playoff. That was a nerve-wracking week. For Bearcats fans. So add that and bring that into the Big 12. And you've got a really good, solid rivalry. Boone Pickens Stadium is going to be a tough place to play if you're the Cincinnati Bearcats. And Nipper Stadium will be a tough place to play if you're the Oklahoma State Cowboys. But Luke Fickle, to me, he's the best head coach in the conference and might be the most accomplished as well. Yes, Mike Gundy is the most accomplished over a long period of time. And you have to think, okay, 
Luke Fickle's got to go through perhaps some more recruiting cycles, you know, four-year developmental players more than one time to prove his success. But the appetizers look good. What he's done so far looks really good. Luke Fickle has two conference championships and probably three after this year. I mean, yeah, I mean, go into the Big 12 right now. And you can't say to me that Brent Venables, Steve Sarkeesian, Mike Gundy, Matt Campbell, or anyone for that matter, is better than Luke Fickle. In terms of, you know, fan base's views towards their head coach, Fickle has got to be at the top. I mean, ask any Cincinnati Bearcats fan what they don't like about Luke Fickle. It's going to be hard for them to find the answer. And that's why with what he's done, rebuilding the program, winning 10-plus games three of the last four years, would have been 10-plus games had the season not been shortened in 2020. Going to two New Year's Six Bowls, Mike Gundy's only been to one, fun fact. Is it one? I think it's one. Might be two. Anyway, well, if it's two, it's still tied. Did they go in 2015? I'm trying to remember now. Uh, anyway, I might have... Was it in 2015 they went to the Sugar Bowl? Okay. Anyway, I'm losing focus here. Anyway. You have... I think it was. So, no other head coach has been to more New Year's Six Bowl games as a head coach than Luke Fickle and possibly Mike Gundy. Like, that's something you have to think about. If you're trying to rank the best head coaches in this conference, Luke Fickle is probably number one, in my opinion. In fact, he is. Because you don't know how long Mike Gundy's going to last there. You feel like the Fickle era is just beginning. You feel like a whole new era is beginning at Cincinnati. And so that's what makes him the most accomplished head coach, I believe, going into the Big 12, and that will only get better. Again, there are a lot of great head coaches in the Big 12 in football. Gundy, Venables, Matt Campbell, right now Brent Venables, um, Steve Sarkeesian, say what you want about him. Gus Malzahn has been to a national championship. If Gus Malzahn wants to hold, wants to hold that over Luke Fickle's head, fine. But in this era, in the college football playoff era, Fickle won, Malzahn zero. Case closed. On tomorrow's show, uh, Bet Online released their over under win totals for the upcoming 2022 college football season. We'll go to Vegas, back to Vegas. Look at that for the Cincinnati Bearcats. Don't forget to subscribe to the Lockdown Bearcats YouTube channel up to 217 subscribers and counting. You can also follow us to get an alert every time we drop a new episode. And don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter at Frankie underscore 90 with two N's and an ATI. You can follow me on Instagram, AlexFrank9 underscore, or email me at Alex3Frank at gmail.com. If you have questions or a potential show topic that you want me to discuss, feel free to email me or DM me on Twitter at Frankie underscore 90. My DMs are open. The first picks of the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft have been made, so search now for Ultimate NBA Mock Draft and get over 50 insiders the Odyssey sports experts, the draft experts of Locked On NBA Big Board. The five-episode Ultimate NBA Mock Draft is underway. Make Ultimate NBA Mock Draft your second listen today. I'm Alex Frank of the Locked On Bearcats podcast. I'll be back tomorrow to talk about the Bearcats over-under win total for the upcoming season as released by Bet Online. Until then, have a great rest of your day. Enjoy Game 4 tonight of the Stanley Cup Final. Tampa Bay back in the series. A big win in Game 3. Can Colorado, though, regain control before the series shifts back to Denver Friday night for Game 5? Cannot wait for that. Of course, got all Major League Baseball in action today, so enjoy that and so much more. And keep it here tomorrow for Lockdown Bearcats. Until then, I'm Alex Frank. Thanks for making Lockdown Bearcats your first listen every day, and I will talk to you all tomorrow.